Hello and welcome to Spot Tonight. I'm Cecilia Mogbe in Lagos. Austin Okonakba will join me much later on the program. But well, this is what the show looks like tonight. Finidi George will be taking charge of the Super Eagles game between Ghana, Ghana and Nigeria and also against Mali. So right now we have interim coach and is the former assistant coach upgraded to interim coach of the Super Eagles of Nigeria. And the four corners, of course, you know, they are facing Ghana in the final of the African Games for a gold medal, trying to defend your title. And we've got more gold medals coming from the African Games. Ruth Usoro, for the first time, winning a gold medal at the African Games. And of course, Elizabeth Yenacho upgrading from the silver she won, from the bronze she won in 2019 in Morocco, winning a gold medal also. So it's a gold medal rush, track and field is on, and Team Nigeria are ready to go. It's a Tuesday, and Kainde Andrews is in the studio. Kainde, good to have you. It's good to be here, and um, I, I love the smile on your face because I'm actually really smiling just like yourself, <laughs> the African Games. Yes. Um, maybe if you're looking way above us, you might say, okay, what are we doing? But just look behind where Nigeria is seated on the table, and it's exciting time. And also, uh, some names that probably if they had won bronze or even falling out, so yes. maybe fought, will still be like, okay, they had a good train, now they are winning gold. Gold after gold, I think it's already a good one. And these are competitions that you build from. Of course, these are the competitions you build from because this is Olympic year. And it's not just that we'll be talking about. Yes, NWFL is back. We went on a break right now. NWFL starting tomorrow. And the big games we'll be looking at, Edo Queens and Rivers Angels. Samuel Lugbomedia Stadium plays center stage to that. And the weekend, uh, March the 26th from Nigeria Premier League, will also be dissecting most of the big games at the weekend. I will see what are they up to concerning preparations for the Olympics. We have it on the show. Yes, let's start it up with what? The event. Right. I, I'm just like, I'm eager to talk about yeah. this because it's amazing. We'll just run through the event that happened uh, just some few, few minutes, few hours now. And there's actually one that's currently going on. Miss really, Nigeria may just win a good medal in that one. All right, I'll run through uh, the athletes that have won uh, medals uh, this evening. Elizabeth. Ayana Cho are uh, winning gold in Taekwondo, 67 kg upgrading from what she did in Morocco. And you have Ruth Usoro, yes, first time in the African Games. We're going to tell you a story about Ruth Usoro, how she missed out at the Olympics due to, you know what happened uh, 2021, Tokyo 2020 that happens in 2020. We'll tell you that story much later. But right now, this is the first medal at the African Games. She won a gold medal in triple jump, jumping 13.8. Uh, zero meters, and that was her last jump to get this one. Olayinka Olajide clocks 11.55 seconds to win bronze medal in women's 100 meters final. Shade Olatoyu, of course, winning bronze medal in the women's hammer throw final. And Enekwechi Chukwebuka defended the gold medal he won in Morocco, throwing 2.06 meters to win a gold medal in the men's short put final. Shakiru Sherishi, of course, clocking 10.23 seconds to win uh, silver in the men's. 100 meters of final. We, 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 we talk about it on the show that once track and field starts, then you see the medals actually are coming in. Remember, Grace Abram in the long jump. Yeah, she's still in, in the business. And of course, yes, the world champion, record holder, talking about Tobi Loba Amazon. She she's in the final of the 100 meters huddle. She will be running uh, tomorrow. Uh, let's quickly dissect this one. I mean, these medals are coming in from the ladies and the men. I'm sure you were not surprised about this one. Yeah, I'm well, not surprised. Um, the first time uh, probably in this competition I had that rush when wrestling. Wrestling had, you know, one, one fighter, uh, one wrestler having three gold medals. You know, you know, th th there is a way the categories are. Uh, Boro Dudu, uh, Odwaya Dekoroye, yes. uh, Genesis, you know, all, all doing so well. And even for the first time, I had to reckon with the men because they did not just sleep on it. Over competitions, you hear the women are here and the men are so low. But this time, I think the men wanted a, a bite of the, you know, fame and they really did uh, give it, uh, uh, you know, a lot of them. So, and I want to see them go forward. But we've been waiting for track. There is a reason why <laughs> track and field is left up until yeah, now. Yeah. It is like the, uh, 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 the, the, the height of the yeah. competition. And Nigeria is very much part of this. Trust me, there is something about us in Tranka Field that I think we've not even tapped enough mm -hmm. into. We haven't. Yes, we have not tapped enough into. Because if we do, I think we should be clinching, not just the ones happening on the track, even the ones on the field, like the long jump, triple jump, yeah. you know, hammer throw, discuss, yep. and all of that. But looking at all of this, 
Elizabeth Ann Nacho. Yes. Her story is a beautiful story. Yeah. Some years ago, she was introduced to us, and she looked as, uh, 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 you know, as, as much as a novice as yeah. possible. Fragile. All she wanted to do was, was fight. <laughs> fight Taekwondo and leave. And then now she's gathered the experience. She talked about a bronze the last time. And the bronze was all celebrated. Yeah. Because she, this is you being introduced to the yeah. entire continent. Mm -hmm. And now she has gathered enough experience over these years. And now she's winning gold. And that's why it is. I can remember yeah. the president of the Federation yes. took special notes mm -hmm. and special care of <laughs> Elizabeth yeah. Inacha. And this is paying back. And for Ruth Osor, the story won't, won't leave anytime soon. These ladies have a very beautiful story. Now in Ekwechi, Chukwe Buka. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I remember him, remember, I, I, remember, I remember the Olympics and the watching. But, but this, I know. this guy yeah. is in the work every day. Yeah. There is something about him being in Nigeria true and true. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, he grew up out there and all of that. Sometimes you just feel, this guy should have gotten tired with some of the treatment. But he's never tired. He yeah. comes in and gives a lot. And for uh, Ushe, Ushe Orishe Shekiri, I, I, I really, really was rooting yeah. for him to get gold. But it's a good one. Yeah. He wants silver because his, his uh, uh, time turnout yeah. during the heat mm -hmm. were very yeah. massive. massive. So yes. I thought this guy would blaze through in the final. <laughs> but we <laughs> settled for silver. Yeah. And like I said in my opening, Cecilia, yeah. this record time yeah. doings that I'm seeing from her, it is just almost a perfect time for the build up to the, to the Olympics. Olympics. Please, I will say it and say it again. Yeah. Any hate that they can get <laughs> to help them conquer the world yeah. at the Olympics level between now. This is mid-March. Yeah. And then the Olympics is in the it's summer. July, yeah. Please, we need everything. They just need that. Just polish it. It is in there. Let's yeah. just polish it between now and then, mm -hmm. and we might just be singing a very beautiful song at Paris. Uh, hopefully, we'll be singing that. We're going to tell you the story about Ruth yep. Soro now. If you remember, uh, she's a student of uh, Texas Tech University, 26th February 2021. She jumped 6.82 meters yeah. in the long jump to meet the qualifying standard for the Olympics. And of course, not just that, it was the second best jump at that time for yeah. the season, I know, build up to the Olympics. Of course, uh, and if you check uh, what, what also happened uh, June 2021, also, she jumped 14.19 seconds. Uh, one nine meters to win the triple jump at the 2021 yeah. NCAA Division One Outdoor Track and Field Champion in Oregon, yeah. Yeah. and also she also won the NCAA Indoor uh, 2021 title, and then she had a personal best triple jump of 14.50 meters, uh, meeting the qualifying standard for the Olympics, and then she was also placed in top 10 yeah. in the world at that time. Yeah. Now she now qualified for the Olympics, mm -hmm. triple jump and long jump, and what happened? She was one of those 10 athletes yeah. that couldn't compete because, well, she was included in that, uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Saga. ineligible to participate yeah. in the out of competition test, yeah. you know, Nigeria Very happened sad. to her. And of course, she couldn't compete at Very the Olympics. Sad. So that's why I was really happy yeah. you know, when she won gold medal, you know, uh, how many years later, you know, at the African Games. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping she can have that build up, you know, to the Olympics. Paris. And then she will be able to, you know, you know, just build up on yeah. this one yeah. and then get something out of this. That's really what I'm happy about. Yeah. You know, I, I'm so happy too. Um, that, that it, was, it was a huge blow dealt on uh, the nation uh, at, at, at the Olympics. It was, it was a massive one. And trust me, it, it wasn't just, uh, you know, for the top athletes for me. I think the, the athletes who wants to use the Olympics okay. to lay a marker to, yeah. uh, you know, uh, uh, send uh, themselves into the proper limelight or into proper discussions when it comes to respect being, uh, 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 you know, accorded to them. It, it was a huge one. And Ruth Osoro is one of those who, 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 who were... Uh, you know, who were in that, and this time uh, she's winning this, and I'm sure her entire mentality is opened up to the fact that maybe I would it's have maybe. done this some years yeah. ago, but probably this is the best time, time to let it. the entire you world know. understand this, and Ruth Osoro will be behind you. All right, we'll be talking about the four corners, of course, how they were able to beat Uganda two goes to nothing. They left it late, but they got uh, into the final of the African Games where they will be facing Ghana. After this break, we'll talk about the four corners.
your stage, your music, your dream. Tomorrow is yours to take. But my Austin O'Connor is ready to join us now on the program. Austin. It's funny greetings to you, sister. Yeah, my yeah, guest to, today. It's good to be on the show. It's funny greetings to everyone watching us from different parts of the world. Technology can be funny, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah, I'm that's why you're a guest today. You're not co-presenting. <laughs> so I'm welcoming uh, you to the show. Uh, no. <laughs> But it's good to be on the show, Cecilia. And I was listening to you and Kane De Idris talk about athletics at the African Games, and I do not expect less from Team Nigeria. I hope we dominate that one. Because if you take a look at the stars talking about athletics in Africa, Nigeria, maybe aside from the long distance races, we have stars everywhere. I was so proud of the Shakiri and the race he had. I was so proud of the mixed relay team. Uh, came, they talked about Ruth Sora. I was without the Commonwealth Games, and I told her, look, from the Commonwealth Games onwards, let the world hear about you. She's in a very fantastic form now, and I expect her to win gold. Uh, Shade, uh, Chioma, Wumere, you know, stars everywhere. These are, these are athletes that are not just champions in their own right. They've got international experience. They will bring their professionalism to the core, and I hope that Team Nigeria right. will go all the way through the athletics. We've done it with wrestling. We did it with weightlifting. We need to just do the athletics and, you know, um, make a bit of a statement at the African Games. Not the sort of performance we expect when we look at the medal table, but yeah. it's better than where we were last week, Cecilia. You'd agree with me, right? Obviously, it's better than where we were, and of course, we're expecting another good medal to see if the Four Corners can actually defend their title. Let's just uh, take a look at, you know, what it's like, the time of the game. It's going to be on Thursday, and of course, Nigeria is facing Ghana, and 9 p.m. Nigerian time, that is the time for that game. Now, for the Four Corners, how did they get, how were they able to get here? They uh, defeated Uganda to go to nothing, leaving it uh, late. Okay, we just uh, just a confirmation of the result, the semi-final result uh, that happened on Monday. Nigeria, Uganda, two goes to nothing, and for Ghana, beating Senegal by three one. That's why the two of them will be facing the, uh, playing the gold medal uh, uh, match, which is on Thursday, Nigeria, Ghana, and it's 9 p.m. Nigerian time, and Ghana is 8 p.m. Of course, it's Cape Coast. We'll be rooting for the Four Corners to see if they can, you know, get one over Ghana. If you remember what happened last year in Wafumi tournament, where Ghana beat Nigeria, you know, uh, in the final to win the title, this may just be a revenge match. But uh, Coach Danjuma described it as unfinished business, because that Wafubi tournament last year was a painful one in Kumasi for the Four Corners. Yes, and um, got in to this point without conceding yes. uh, the Falcon, it's, it's been a good run. Oh, we know what they can do. We, we can tell uh, even before the competition started, uh, I think we were on this show and we we're talking about how we can all beat our chest for the Falcon, but for the Flying Eagles, we can't really say. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, they will pull their way, but we, see, we saw that they didn't pull you know, their weight. They didn't get out of the group stage. <laughs> as much as we wanted, but for the Falcon, uh, I love the fact that Danjuma has made it unfinished business not revenge. Sometimes revenge can swallow you. Yeah. But unfinished business just look like take care of business, but take care of it better than you did the last time. It's as simple as that. And I think with the way the run has been for them, they should go all the way. But I'm looking at that Ghana-Senegal game, two good teams coming up against each other and Ghana winning 3-1. I think the <laughs> Falconers have got their hands full. But if there is any team yeah, I can go to bed... Remember the result between Ghana, yes. Nigeria and Senegal? Funny. I can I can go to bed <laughs> and you know shut my eyes. Okay. I, I think the Falconets are one of those teams, uh, and I think by Thursday, uh, you know, it will be a good good one. Uh, you know, uh, for the Nigerian team. But Ghana, I'm always always having fear. You know, 
when it comes to the rivalry. It's a mental thing. But, <laughs> the but, 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 will, but I love how the medals table is looking like. I mean, on Sunday, <laughs> they, they climbed up from the 16th, but right now, they are not even in top five. Yes, it was arm wrestling that gave them 41 medals, actually shot them up. But if you look at the medals table, Ghana, nah, they're not even close. Okay, <laughs> Austin, just a quick one. Yeah, I'm trying to rub yeah. it in because we know that rivalry, it's something mm -hmm. we can never put yeah. away. It continues. I'm, I'm, I think this is good learning curve for the for the girls, and I always say it, and let me say it again that with the age grade, no pressure. You, Cecilia, I'll be talking about the progress the Four Cornets have made for this for the senior women's national team. It has actually produced players that walked into the team and they are commanding starting shares. And we've seen it at this African Games. Talents, Christopher Danjuma. I keep giving him his flowers. He knows how to discover and use talent at that level. With Ghana, they just need to teach them it's a mentality thing. Just take your mind off it. You've beaten Uganda. The male team couldn't beat Uganda, <laughs> but you've taken Uganda out of the way. You now have a gold medal match to play. Yes, we know in a game of Ludo, if it's Nigeria versus Ghana, it will generate talking points. Yes. <laughs> so they need to just teach them that, look, psychologically just be fine just go out there and get the job done yes. don't see it like it's Ghana just go out there and get the job done and it's good you know mental activity for these girls at this age for them to come out go through that sort of rivalry it prepares them for the top yes. because it gets tougher when they eventually make it to the Super Falcons mm -hmm. or even go to Europe or America just as, as okay. is going yeah. now, to play football so it's part of that developmental okay. process. That's why I said no pressure. Yeah. But with what I've seen yeah. about this Four Connects team, yeah. I've done shows where you and me and some of that guests were asking me, ah, you know, are you sure women's football is closing up? God, blood? No, no, no. Not with Four Connects or Flamingos. Maybe at the senior level because of the competition that they've gotten from the Super Four Cons, but with the Four, four Connects, all day, every day, Cecilia, I'm confident that they can get the job done. Mm, confidence. All right, let's look at the medal table. What is like for Team Nigeria? We we'll just look at the top five. Yes, the big teams that are there, starting with Egypt, of course, still very much on top. 92 gold medals, silver, 40, bronze, 32, and in total, 164. That's the numbers that Egypt have. You go to Nigeria, second spot. 30 in gold, 21 in silver, bronze is 31, and 82 in all. South Africa closing in on this one, 27, 29, 38, and 94. You go to Algeria, 22 gold medal, 31 silver, 40 bronze medal, and 93 in all. And for Tunisia, uh, fifth closing in also on uh, Egypt, on uh, Algeria, 14, 21, 29, 64. What's really funny is... You have Egypt, Algeria, Tunisia, the North African countries in the top five are just Nigeria and South Africa. I'm looking for another West African country, only Nigeria, West Africa, that is yeah. actually in the top five here. And that's where Nigeria is, you know, senior to Ghana. So no comparison at all. Now let's go to the Super Eagles of Nigeria. Yes, Finidi George is the new man in charge. But first, we'll just take a look at the players that are out. Uh, we don't have replacement yet. Maybe before the game, we'll be having a replacement for that. Uh, the players are actually, you know, out of it. You have Victor Osime is out. You also have uh, Gabriel Osifo is out. And Tyrone Eboe also out uh, for the team. I want us to take a look at the players in camp before, you know, we st uh, start dissecting uh, the Super Eagles against Ghana. You have uh, about uh, all the players you have in camp. Not all of them are actually in camp right now. Siri Dessas, Nathan uh, Teller, and uh, Moses Simon, Wambali Stalin, Fisayo, Bashiru, Kevin Bassi, Wobi Alex, Alexi Wobi, Shemi Aja, Jam uh, Jamilu Collins, and Bruno Emachi, Sadiq Uma are the players that you have in camp. Uh, currently. Uh, if we can have that, we'll just take a look at those players in camp and uh, the players we're expecting to actually uh, join them. Those are the players we'll be expecting to join them. As I mentioned earlier, the players in Kayasri, Dessas, uh, Nathan Tell uh, Teller, yeah, Moses Simon, Wambali, Stalin, uh, Fisayo Bashiru, Kevin Bassin, Sodi Kumar, Bruno Yemuchi, Jamilu uh, Collins, Shemi Ajayi, and Alex Iwobi are the players you have in camp. Yes, Victor Osime will not be part of this team because he's pulled out due to injury. Gabriel Olosho, Tyron Ebue, and Tawa Wini are the players that are out. And of course, Finidi George will be the one taking charge 
of these players. Let's just quickly take a listen to Finidi George. And after that, we will, uh, DSTV will definitely continue. Uh, with, we have Inside the Niger Delta, uh, continue Mamode, Akuga, and of course, all other platforms we'll be having. I uh, will continue with uh, sport tonight. Um, it's been good. Um, uh, we're still waiting for some players. Um, all the players that are here now um, have done a good job, good training. It's not that intense because some of them are coming, just traveling back or getting here. So, um, but it's been a good feeling. As a coach, uh, there's a responsibility, but um, that's what we do. You know, you have to be calm and uh, do your job. Uh, make sure you do it properly. We know a lot of Nigerians are watching, so we want to make them proud, you know. Afghan is gone, so these are two games that are very, very crucial uh, to Nigeria, so we'll take it seriously and uh, make sure we get the best out of these games. Yes, two international friendlies are coming up uh, this month. Nigeria, Ghana, Nigeria, Mali, and Finidi George, uh, the assistant coach, has been upgraded to be in charge of those two games until the Nigeria Football Federation will have, uh, well, a permanent coach for uh, that. So, now, it's going to be market in Morocco, the first game against Ghana. Of course, the rivalry continues mm. in Morocco on Friday. Finidi George is in charge. <laughs> the jollof right there. there <laughs> Uh, it's a friendly. Come yeah. on, are you guys going to bring that rivalry no, every again? every time, every time. We'll be them on Thursday, <laughs> then we'll, we'll continue on Friday. Aust Aust Austin had said, even if it's a Ludo game, <laughs> it's Nigeria Ghana, it's a general conversation. Um, <laughs> Thomas Pate had yeah. said, you know, he had opted out, um, you know, trying to continue his recuperation at Arsenal. So, already was seen like for like, you know, some top names not being here, not being there. But in the words of Jose Pesero, uh, you know, former coach, he said, I understand at a point that whether it's a friendly <laughs> dead rubber game, Nigerians wants to win every game. Yeah. But I think the most significant thing about this game, especially the Ghana game, this will be the first game Nigerians will be watching the Super Eagles after the Nations Cup. So many Nigerians now came back to falling in love with the Super Eagles with their progression. Yes, there was a bit of a, you know, uh, 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 maybe I'll say <laughs> capitulation in the final. But the love is still there, and they want to see how their Super Eagles will fare. And I think it's just beautiful enough yeah. to see them win, especially beating Ghana. Yeah. And that's, you know, continue to have uh, the, the fans talking about the citizen, yeah. uh, you know, getting stuck with the team. And then you play Mali. But most importantly for, uh, you know, the technical side or tactical side is the fact that the new coach or, okay, the interim coach gets to understand so many players, gets to understand, you know, how this team thinks, how this team thinks and all of that. So, uh, which players will make your top 11 going forward after you play Ghana and then you play Mali? And I think that will be, we don't know what would happen after these two games, but for now, I think Fini the George, this will be a proper learning curve, getting to feel these players. See, there is difference mm -hmm. in being the assistant coach and the head coach. Sometimes you just might be a little passive yeah. as an assistant, but as the head coach, you're the main man. The authority. So this time, all of these players, whether you work with them, because I saw Finidi with them so much mm -hmm. at the Nations Cup, yes. uh, you know, right there in Cote d'Ivoire, but this time, they now have to take orders from mm -hmm. him. They now have to listen to him. Another angle is head coach can be tough. Assistant coaches would always give you soft landing. Don't worry. Uh, head coach is trying to do this. He's yeah. trying to. As an head coach now, yeah. those toughness, those rigidity, <laughs> you now have to instill it because you need your team uh, to listen to you, get discipline, and also fall into what you want. So, if you need to judge, I wish you a good era, whether it's two games, ten yeah. games, whichever. We wish you well. And for the Nigerian citizen, they want to see their Super Eagles play again after mm -hmm. the Nations Cup. And, and Austin, I love what he said right there when he was talking about Nigerians always want good football, and that's what they intend to give to Nigerians, friendly or no friendly. Ghana, Mali, one is on Friday, and the second one is on Tuesday, 26th. I like it, you know, I like that he knows that Nigerians love to see beautiful football. And Philip Judd comes from that golden generation that yeah. we cannot stop talking about, the class of 1994. You know, when we go back and watch that 
That Super Eagles yeah. team, that's when we start asking, what style of football <laughs> does the Super Eagles play, you know? Wait. So, internship base <laughs> over now. I don't care if it's a friendly game. I like being the judge. Uh, I, someone I call a friend because he is always open to learn. Yeah. He's somebody. I remember when I spoke to him on the show when um, Genotra was in charge. Remember that show yeah. that he came yeah. out playing? To yeah. say Genotra isn't doing what we need to be doing for our football to develop. Finidi, fast forward, you're now in charge. <laughs> so look at the man in the mirror and yeah. be the change. You know, yeah. I like the fact that now the fans are, are loving the Super Eagles again. Mm -hmm. And I want to reiterate that when it's Ghana, it's serious business, you know, because <laughs> the conversations we start, oh, it's Ghana that stopped us from going to the World Cup. We've not forgotten, <laughs> you know, so it doesn't make it a friendly game. Yeah. And with Finidi, George, with what I've seen him do, with Aimba, with the sort of midfield control we yeah. saw at the AFCON, which some persons credited to Finney the judge, with some of the things they also learned from Jose Pizarro. Look at the look at the Côte d'Ivoire coach, Cecilia. Yeah. He just needed to learn. And then when he had a chance to be in charge, he was winning the AFCON for his country. And now he's been made a permanent head coach. So Finney the judge must show work hands. Now the ball in his, is in his court. He needs to let us see something that who knows. And for him, Cecilia, this is more than a chance to impress yeah. because he has also applied for the role of for the vacant Super Eagles job. So if he does well now, he might just be getting the job even before they call other persons for interview. So we're <laughs> waiting to see what he can do against Mali okay. and Ghana. You know? And that's a tough test. I mean, two games, the friendly games, and that's going to be what yeah. they will use to test him. I don't think that's fair on him. Whatever yeah. happens, it's just friendly. We we'll take it like that. Yes, it's Ghana, it but out. hey, we want when he should. He should what? He should opt out. <laughs> I mean, it feels it's too much of a test. <laughs> you are mean. You are mean. Yes, and the Kalichi Enacho and the likes are expected to join uh, the teams in camp. 22 players in all. But you have some players that will be coming in tonight. Chidoze, Awazi, most one of those. Frank Oyeka and uh, the likes. But the only player expected to come in on Wednesday will be Bright to Saeed Samuel. will be the only one coming in <laughs> on Wednesday. So by the, at the end of uh, today, you have 21 players in camp while they wait for Samuel, uh, Osai, Sa Bright Osai Samuel, that's the only player they will be waiting for. Yes. All right, that's it on the Super Eagles of Nigeria. Yes. Okay. NWFL, where the ladies are back, the women's league. I don't know how many breaks we've taken uh, <laughs> this, this season. Well, this is the third one. But the good news is they are back. And we'll just run through the fixtures for uh, mid-week games. Yes, their games are played on Wednesday across the nation, starting with Group A. What do we have there? We have Niger Hotels and Dana's Ladies of Lagos facing each other. That will be in Abuja. Confluence Queens and the Moa Queens in action. Abia Angels hosting Royal Queens from Delta State. Heartland Queens will also host Nasara Amazons who know how to score goals. Of course, high flying side top of that group. And in Group B, where you have all the, well, the super teams, so to speak, uh, Remo Stars hosting Delta Queens, Equity Queens hosting uh, Bayeso Queens, and Sunshine Queens up against FC Robo Queens, and Edo Queens and Rivers Angels facing each other. Yes, that's the game we'll be dissecting because the Rivers Angels wants to use this to qualify for the Super Seas. They, they win this game, they will ha we would have qualified for the Super Seas. Edo Queens, if they don't win this game, where they can just start thinking of how to miss out of Super Six. That's how dicey it is, because their position and on the table is really precarious now. That game, March the 10th, Nigerian Women's League encounter, Rivers Angels, Edo Queens. This is Super Six battle. Pardon anybody. <laughs> pardon anybody who follows the league and when they want to talk about, uh, you know, the Women's League, yeah. they just quickly run to Group B. <laughs> pardon anybody. <laughs> because... I don't know how these group B is. I don't, I don't know how they, they, they I don't know why they about to six like heavyweight that. Yeah. all in one phase. We're talking Biosa, Delta, Robo, River Sanger, Edo Queens. <laughs> these are heavyweights when it comes to you know, women, yeah. uh, you know, club football in Nigeria, and they are all here. Uh, anybody who does not make the top six from their group, don't don't feel bad. <laughs> Just look at the teams that made it. I understand. It's, hard. it's like having Real Madrid, Real Madrid, Real Madrid. You know, in, in the same group, <laughs> one would definitely fall out. So I, I think that one, Edo Queens versus River Angels, definitely will get all of the conversations. Any of those teams that get to fall off or fall out, especially. If Edo Queens gets all three points over River Angels, the conversation just continues. Yeah. But 
for a team like Rivers India with their wealth of experience, one of the things they've learned to do, qualify early and have a rest and just wait for others to come join you. Don't leave it till, uh, you know, permutations and all of that. So I think this is tough enough. And for uh, Darling, uh, you know, Robo Queens uh, playing Sunshine away, uh, Robo have also been hot and cold, not uh, uh, been here, been there. Uh, I think these are games uh, they should definitely fancy, but Sunshine Queens can be, uh, you know, a proper, uh, uh, you know, uh, spanner in the wheel of any team in the MPFL. I don't care how big you are. Sunshine Queens can actually do that to you. So FC Robo will be wary of that as much as, you know, uh, maybe it is easy for you to pardon teams who go away when it comes to the Women's League. So uh, I think all of this game, Remo starts playing Delta Queens. If Remo gets to win, it's a huge story. Yeah. And for if, if Delta Queens also qualifies, they are not also positioned so well on the table. So they need all three points from this game. And for Ekiti Queens, they have their work cut out. They are playing Bayosa Queens. Bayosa is another <laughs> team I have huge respect yeah. for. But in Group A, hey, uh, we'll see games too. We'll see games there. There is Danas, who is also Danas, yeah. that's also a Lagos yeah. club. Always, you know, having my eyes on Danas. So, uh, you know, let's. I, I'm just excited that the women's league is back. But you said something that you know gave me a little bit of us. Uh, my thought. How many times have we gone on break? <laughs> Hopefully. We've had the last one. Let's celebrate the successes, Hopefully right? Hopefully, we've had the last one. <laughs> Austin, Rivers Angels, Edo Queens. The, 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 the reverse, the other fixture ended 3 1 in Port Harcourt in favor, of course, the host uh, uh, states, which is uh, Rivers Angels. And uh, Muturayo Ezekiel scored two goals. Chiamaka Okichuku also scored a goal. That's how they got that. And the two players are actually with the under 20 teams, <laughs> they are not here. So Rivers and just will have their work cut out when they face the Queens uh, tomorrow. Exactly. And, and with Rivers Angels, they've always shown that when we ask questions, they can answer, you know, <laughs> because they know that these sort of questions will come up. For Edo Queens, I think before, before we went on that break, they, they went their last two games with yeah. wins. Mm -hmm. So that, that's, en that's enough for their mentality to get into this one. They also know that Rivers Angels know how to spoil the party with the so-called big teams. So Edo Queens can just do the bare minimum to go on to win that one, to keep relevance on that very competitive league yeah. table, you know? So um, if you ask me, hmm. just before the break, with the form we were seeing from Rivers Angels, I would have said, no, Rivers Angels might just go give us an upset. But... But with this and what the table is looking like, yeah. I think Edo Queens will just do enough. They will come out, give it their best shot, and go on to win it. But but aside the Group B fixture in Group A, it will be good to see uh, some of those small teams give us, you know, the sort of results that will get us talking. Shout yeah. out to uh, Dana's ladies, uh, Niger Retails, uh, for, you know, the talking points that they've already given to us this season. But let's see what Confluence Queens can continue yeah. to do. Abia Angels yeah. also, you know, and then Heartland Queens, at a time when Second Heartland, place. for the men, were looking for their way out of the wilderness, their, their female team uh, was, they were doing good things in the yeah. Women's League. So I'd like to see what Heartland Queens will do. Uh, when the league uh, commences against Cecilia. Yeah, if you check Atlanta Queens, they are second on that Group A yeah. table. Nassau Amazons are topping, and Rivers Angels topping uh, Group uh, B. Edo Queens, they are fourth on the table, and nine games, 13 points. Rivers Angels, nine games, 18 points. That's why a win for them. Yes, they book a spot 21 on, uh, for that Super 6, which they are aiming for. Let's uh, take a listen to the coach and some of the players ahead of the game against Edo Queens. Edo can say whatever they feel they can say. But uh, just like he saw this morning, we've run out of our training, and I will be leaving maybe today to Edo. I think uh, come Wednesday, uh, our own target, just as they are planning, we are planning. That, that uh, match with Edo is our qualification match. Just like I told the player this morning, if we get that match from Edo, that three points from Edo, we've already qualified for the Super Six. So uh, we are not uh, even ready to lose any point to Edo Queen in uh, Penin City come Wednesday. We shouldn't be talking about uh, getting a draw. We are going out right there to get the three points, knowing fully well that our group is a very tight group. So we are not going to lose guard to any team. I think uh, uh, what, why, the major thing why they are talking tough is that maybe they are at the relegation zone. That if I say relegation zone, they are not sure of qualifying for the Super Six. So if anything happens and wins them in that match, their qualification for Super Six have gone. And then we too, on, sec on our second hand too, we too we are ready 
to go there and get our three points. So if we wear that, uh, if we get that three points, it will make our qualification for the super six very easy. Because before we go to Ekiti, we want to make sure we already qualify for the super six, not waiting at the last minute for us to get the qualification. Mm, though it's a away match, so we didn't expect it to be that simple as it is. To but God will surely help us to play to our expectation. For me, I think we'll be able to do well. We'll be able to do well because we have been training very hard. I think uh, football is a game of 90 minutes. Um, they must have done their homework considering the loss they had now at our home. But we, too, we are going there with 100%. We just want to give everything because we have to focus on ourselves alone and that's what we are going to do. Of course, we want to get to the Super 6 and then afterwards the CAF. That is our biggest target and by the grace of God we will achieve it. I can't say what the result will be like but I know for sure that we are coming out with everything we've got. When a kid defender is actually telling you what they want to come up with, Edo Quiz, get ready. See what you're going to get at the Samuel Gumbudia Stadium at tomorrow. All right, we're leaving the Women's League and go to MPFL games over the weekend. We didn't see those many results apart from, yes, Ben and Sharon, after those uh, hiccups that they suffered in two games back to back, they had to bounce back to get a comprehensive result, a fantastic result against, well, Austin's a team for last season. Doma United. Yes, Rivers, uh, Rivers United uh, beating Heartland by a lone goal. <laughs> by <Bias> United, he's <laughs> smiling because we are just talking about what happened in the other one. But I say United and Cannibal has ended 2 1. Abia Warriors and Sunshine Stars as goalless. Rangers and Lobby Stars at 2 1. And of course, Ben Assurance and Doma United, you saw that earlier, Fergus to nothing. Sporting Lagos winning in Lagos against Choir United. Aimba Niger Tenders at 3 1. And Gombe and Aqua United. Aqua went away from home. This was what Austin was talking about. They need to win away from home. But they couldn't get all three points. They got a point at Gombe. And Katina and Plateau United entered 2 1. So Plateau United, their goal scoring form is swindling. 3 SC and Ramos Stars. But Ramasta is not a good one for them. 3SC is showing that, remember what happened uh, uh, midweek where they won away from home, the only team that won away from home, mm -hmm. and right now against Ramasta. Mm -hmm. So these team, let's just start off with that one. Ramasta, yeah. I mean, when they started this season, mm -hmm. there was so much, you yeah. know, on them. But right now, it's really not uh, looking <laughs> uh, pretty. So, but, but for 3SC and Rema Stars, yeah, it was a derby that yeah. everyone was expecting mm -hmm. to go the way of shooting stars, yeah. winning away from home. But now, two goes to nothing against Rema Stars. This is something that is really, something is looking good for yeah. 3SC. At, at a point, I, I think uh, earlier this season, Rema Stars have this, uh, they boast about, um, you know, uh, yeah. we, we've never lost um, Southwestern Derby. Yeah, we're always the king when it comes to we're playing sporting, we're playing, uh, you know, 3SC, Sunshine, the Southwestern Derby. But now back to back, they lost to Sporting Lagos. It ended for, uh, you know, 4 1 and then uh, losing to 3SC. Now there is something, uh, you know, about Red Monsters. Yeah. I think now they will understand Ija Ball, the coach of Red Monsters, and yes. also the team, that there is a reason why some teams are called the top teams. You <laughs> need to preserve your mentality. Yeah. You need to preserve uh, you know, uh, 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 yourself when it gets to this point. We always call it the uh, you know, business end in the MPFL. Yeah. These teams, like if not for last season, teams like Rangers, teams like Aimba, uh, teams like Rivers, and also at a point, I think for like seven straight seasons, Aqua United is also in that conversation. They, they come to you like a house on fire. They come to you like they really want to tear you down. And for Red Monsters, maybe they will understand that and probably get the job done before the end of the season. But for now, they look like out of sorts. For 3SC, since the Riot Act yeah. was read right out to, <laughs> to uh, the Oracle himself, Benga Agubote, it seemed like that is what yeah, he needed second, yeah. uh, you know, to get uh, awake. And now the man is awake. And you just mentioned he went midweek to win at yeah. Doma. Uh, they beat Doma at home. It ended, uh, you know, 1-0. And now he's beating Remosta. So, huge one, huge one. And um, some other games. See, there is something about Iimba. Mm. This is the reason why uh, he's the most talked about team in the MPFL. Yeah. They just don't know how to stay, uh, uh, you know, in one of... We are one of those boys. No. Iimba sees themselves, player, coach, fans, 
as the biggest team in the country, and they always carry themselves with that. Even when they are in the midst of, you know, some poor results, Eimba continues uh, to, or at the end of the day, shows reason why. Last season, when they won in the uh, Super Six, yeah. it was a case of Eimba might not even get into the Super Six. Yeah. And then they, you know, crawled, they got in there, and they won. That's what you do. And for Sporting Lagos, I'm a Lagos person. I love what they're doing. Hopefully, they get to survive. Like I always say about Sporting Lagos, the story seeming like, you know, the story of MFM. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they struggle to, uh, you know, stay in the first season they promoted. In the second season, they were in the Champions League. Talking about being second, yeah. uh, you know, in that. So probably Sporting Lagos, who's got something similar with MFM. The chairman are the same, you know, for both sides. So continue to do your survival race. Survive this season. <laughs> yeah. Learn. Uh, you know, it's a learning curve yeah. and then do better next season. For Rangers, I think they are the best team for me this season. With what Rangers went through last season, no, 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 Fidel is in a chuku, well done. It's a complete yeah. turnaround, complete yeah. turnaround. And for Aqua United, because Austin is my very good friend, I need them to survive. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's the game you're talking about now. <laughs> Lobby Stars and Rangers. You're seeing pictures from that game. What uh, Rangers, I mean, they're second on the log right now, Austin. And that's a team, or as he mentioned, struggled last season. But this season, well, they've been on fire. That's what it means, you know, when you fall, you need to pick yeah. yourself back up, you know. I think um, it's a clear testament of what it means when you put your money where your mouth is. When yeah. they brought in Amobi to become the general manager, Amobi was just coming from proper internship in yes, Europe, Europe, where yes. he saw what needs to be done to have a proper professional football club. And when he came back and was made GM, the first rolled out a five-year strategic plan. You remember? Yes. Rangers did that. Next team, Rangers got kit sponsors. Yeah. Next team, Rangers was telling us every match, before every match, they what they expect from their team. They also got big with their social media presence. Yes. Remember what I always say to you guys, that sometimes you get the win even before you get into the pitch. Now, they are getting the results. Rangers, these same Rangers, that struggled to, to play draw with small teams last season. They had to just, you know, tweak their mentality and say they're a big side. They're flying antelopes. <laughs> and against Lobby Stars, Lobby Stars, they've been so decent. What has yeah. kept them on top of the league table till now is because when they go away, they try not to lose. They will hold you, yeah. suck pressure, and try to pick a point. But Rangers did just enough, 2-0, and then it ended 2-1. Look at shooting stars. <laughs> Look at where they are on the league table. Yeah. They are now sixth. Mm. And it's a function of that away win on March day 24, yeah. when they went away to beat Doma 1-0, yeah. and then the Southwest Derby, March day 25, yeah. they defeated Remo Stars. Shooting stars are now sixth on the log with 40 points. That's the trick in the MPFL. Yeah. Try to go away and pick points on the road. You know, see Sporting Lagos, uh, Sporting Lagos same yeah. thing. We're listening to Coach Paul of Kaffa before the start. Yeah. They said they must make sure that they are not losing in Lagos. And since <laughs> when they stopped losing or dropping points in Lagos, they, are, they, they look decent. They're yeah. now 11th on the log yeah. with 34 points. Okay. So that's the yeah. NPSL for you. It's very competitive. Okay. You must win when you have to win. All right. Win when you have to win. Let's just take a look at the table, what it's like, uh, the top four and the bottom four. Of course, Lobby Star still leading 26 points, uh, 40, uh, 26 games. 46 points. Rangers are second on the table, 26 and 45. Just one uh, behind uh, leaders, Lobby Stars. They aim by their third, 45 points. Same uh, point with uh, Rangers, but the difference is that's on the goals. And you have Plata United at fourth place. Now, let's look at the teams that are leading from the bottom. <laughs> Quarry United leading from the bottom, 29 from tw after 25 games. Aqua United dropped back again to this one. A virtue of that one point to pick up, they couldn't win 28 after 26 games. Heartland, and second from bottom. And of course, uh, Gombe United on uh, 26 and 23 points, losing 14 games so far this season. Before we wrap up the show, quickly, a quick one on wrestling. I mean, Team Nigeria, the, the ladies went to uh, African Games, of course, they cleared all the medals, the ladies winning six gold medals. And now at the African Senior Championships, they have started again. Let's just wrap it up with this one, Austin. Wrestling. I know, bro. <laughs> and there's no way we will wrap it up without talking about the <laughs> phenomenal blessing of Bolo <laughs> Zuzu. Yeah. Cecilia, she went to the African Senior Wrestling Championships in Alexandra, Egypt, 
and she won gold superiority win when she defeated Osman Badran of yeah. Egypt 12-2. You know what? That's blessings for teams. For teams, yeah. What is this person <laughs> 8, 9, 11, 12, 13, 14, <laughs> Africa title. Unstoppable. She is a fantastic <laughs> champion. Odwanyo Adekuroye also won in a 57 kg category. Yeah. She defeated Chama of Egypt by paying for to win her eighth African title. There was also a win for Kola Wale Esther in the 62 kg category. Mm. She won a second African senior title. In all, Nigeria won four gold medals and one silver. It was just Anna Ruben yeah. that didn't win gold. We need to. Ken Davis, you yeah. know what? We should be <laughs> worshipping and honoring our female sports persons. Every day we have an opportunity to do this because whenever they represent I... Nigeria, they are always winning. So congratulations to Daniel Igalia and his team. Uh, next up for them is the Olympic qualifiers for those that are looking for tickets to Paris 2024. Cecilia, that's a good place to, to live leave the show tonight. In London, I'm Austin Okonakman. In everything you do, remember to keep talking sports. Bye for now. Okay, it was nice doing this with you. I know you want to talk about wrestling. Yeah, We're out of time. Yeah. <laughs> well done, ladies. Continue to do us proud. It's good to be here. Right, thank you so much for watching. I'm Cecilia Amor. We'll leave you with visuals coming from the IOC president, Thomas Bach, talking about preparations for the Paris Games and also introduction of eSports. Bye for now.